If you've clicked on this video, you're probably wondering, how do I change the window on my Niton XL2? I'm gonna show you in just a few short steps. Okay, so first grab your Niton XL2 and we're gonna to wanna to make sure our analyzer is off. We're gonna press and hold the power button on the left-hand side as seen here. The screen eventually will just turn off. Now your analyzer is powered down. Next thing I'm gonna do is place the analyzer in a spot where I can easily work on it. So that means in this case, this video, I've got the angle of the back and I've created a little cardboard ramp that I can put the analyzer in a position where you can easily see it. Now, what we need to do here is clean our workspace off. We don't want any debris, any oil or dirt contaminating the process when we open up the sensitive guts inside the analyzer. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is determine when we need to change the window. Now, it's obvious if the window is broken, but you'd be surprised how many times I see people not changing windows in the field. The second time you may need to change your windows if it's dirty. You can see how clean a fresh window is if the window has a lot of soil or if it has grease or other things on it, then that can also impact your results. Now we need to determine which window we put in our handheld XRF. Since we're using a Niton XL2 Gold, it's likely that we're gonna use the Proline window as shown here. This is a thinner window than the other type of window called a polypropylene window. And the Proline allows for better analysis of light elements with your handheld XRF. Now, this is a one mil polypropylene window here on the left that we're not gonna use today, which may offer a little bit more protection, but doesn't allow superior analysis of light elements. All right, now, before we put this window in your XRF, we're gonna to wanna to clean the entire workstation. That means keeping our area free of debris except for the tools we need to do the job. You'll notice that my hands have also been cleaned. Wash them before you actually put the window in your XRF or you're gonna contaminate something. Now, look at this. Even the windows themselves come in a plastic bag. That's by design to keep the expensive components inside your handheld XRF free of soot, dust, debris, and dirt. Now we need to talk about the tools that we need to do the job. So first up, we have a screwdriver. I recommend a screwdriver like this one. Some of the old analyzers actually had a screwdriver in the box. You'll notice that this screwdriver fits into my palm. It's a Phillips screwdriver, and that head, the size of the Phillips screwdriver, is exactly the right size to fit in the screws on the snout of the Niton XL2. Don't use something that's either too big or too small, or you can damage it. Next up, we've got a pair of tweezers. Now you'll notice that these are nice and shiny, but they have a very nice rounded edge on the front. This prevents you from accidentally damaging the windows and they're also really firm. Now let's compare that to electronic tweezers, which have a very sharp and pointy edge. It's easy to accidentally pierce the window with. You wanna use these ones, they're better. Now we also have a alcohol wipe here. I use the lint-free kinds and highly recommend them. This is important for cleaning around the snout of the gun, around the faceplate. You just want to make sure that you do not clean inside of your XRF. You don't want to touch the sensitive components in there. Now, these are cheap. You can use a variety of alcohol wipes. Just don't use scented ones and make sure that you never clean inside your handheld XRF. Now, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our screwdriver and we need to remove these top, the top and the bottom screws on the faceplate. So I'm gonna unscrew the top one now and just be gentle when you do this. And uh, now we're gonna get the bottom one undone as well. These screws are really tiny. Um, so just make sure that you put them in a place you're gonna remember them. Just look at how small that screw is in my hand, okay? so. It's really important now that we stop and just take a moment here and say, do not remove any other screws of your analyzer. We just want to remove this front faceplate. We don't want to remove any other screws in the gun, including the other two in the front here. Um, there's really no reason to do that. We just want to remove this faceplate in the front. See this little black plastic piece? And you can see the window in there. So as I turn it over, you can see that the XRF window is stuck to the back of this faceplate. And you can also see that it's punctured. My tweezers go right through this window. And that's how you know that it's time to change the window. So behind the faceplate are the X-ray tube and detector. I'm touching the edge, I'm not touching inside, but let's zoom in and take a closer look. Okay, you see it kind of looks mechanical in there. You wanna make sure that we clean around the outside, but never the inside of the analyzer. Those components are the expensive ones if you damage them, your repair could be more than $10,000. Now it's time to remove the old window. This little tab you can see me pulling with my thumb is where you're gonna pull. Just pull up and oops, the window ripped. 
This happens sometimes. There's some leftover plastic that you can pull off of there and the adhesive that's used is a little bit goopy. This is where a tweezers comes in pretty handy if something like this were to happen to you. So once you pull that off, you're ready to put the new window in place. All right, so now that we've got the window ready, we're gonna look at that seam on the top of the window. You can see that little line. I'm gonna peel that away with my finger and release the backing film which exposes the adhesive on the window. So now your window will actually stick to the faceplate. So we're gonna grab our faceplate and with the tweezer, we're gonna put it gently in place, careful not to touch the window with our hands. And we're gonna align these two circles. You can kind of see how to do that on camera. Boom, now it's in there. So now I just press around the outside since it is a pressure adhesive that is used to hold this in place. Now our brand new window in the faceplate needs to be put back on the snout of our Niton XL2. So what we're going to do is look at the gasket on the back to determine the orientation. We can match up the buttons with the bottom and then we can orient our faceplate and gently but firmly press the faceplate onto the snout of the Niton XL2. The next thing that we have to do is replace the two screws, one in the top and one in the bottom of the faceplate. When you start threading these screws, make sure that they go in easily. If they don't, back out and try again. Don't force it. Also, make sure when you tighten these screws, you're tightening them just snug. You don't need to wrench on them. That's not what you need to do. So here we go. Now we have a brand new window in our Niton XL2. Thanks for watching. To find windows for your handheld XRF, visit AlloyGeek.com. Here at AlloyGeek.com, we carry accessories for every brand of handheld XRF on the market.